what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel so i'm back down here at my buddy george's house getting started on putting his big block chevy back together first things first uh we're going to go over polishing the crankshaft and why it's important so let's see what we're looking at here Okay, so this is the crankshaft going into the 509 cubic inch big block Chevy. It is an Eagle crank 4340 forged deal. Now, the engine had approximately 5,000 miles on it when it broke the retainer in half, the valve spring retainer. So you may say, Andy, why are we polishing this crankshaft? Let me show you. And you're gonna understand the importance of having good bearings. Now, this, mind you, this engine had 5,000 miles on it, if you look at this bearing, you can see fine, small particles that have embedded into the surface of the bearing. Now, you may think that's a bad thing, but in actuality, that's exactly what you want in a good bearing. You want it to be able to absorb any kind of metal or dirt into it so that it doesn't gouge the crankshaft. Uh, so when it comes to building engines, and high performance and race applications don't skimp on the bearings make sure that you have something that can withstand the load of what you're doing and uh, something that has a proven track record but you can see that this bearing has had better days and this is a couple other and you see this line right here what what that is is a piece of dirt that's actually drug across the surface of the bearing but just like others you can see where it's embedded metal along the way now looking at the crankshaft here you can see that the surface of the journals have imperfections now the ancient rule of thumb is if you can catch it with your fingernail you need to stop right there and have the crankshaft turned down at uh, machine shop uh, the reason for that is you know you're getting to the point where you know you're not going to be able to polish that much of an imperfection out and when you're building a high performance race engine you want everything to be dead on perfect you know people I've always had the phrase it's been built balanced and blueprinted well this is in my eyes part of blueprinting taking and polishing this down miking it down making sure that we got the correct sizes on each journal here and cleaning this thing thoroughly when we're finished and we're going to go through all of that right now all right first things first when you are polishing a crankshaft these are the two major components that you need uh good shoelaces or paracord or anything of that sort and some uh, fine emery cloth here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this emery cloth and cut it the width of the journals, and then we're gonna wrap it around the crankshaft journal and use this to polish it. Now, mind you, we're not trying to turn down the dimensions of the crankshaft. We're just trying to get a good surface on there, something that is smooth that you can work with. So first things first, you know, a lot of people may just cringe seeing me do this, you know, but everybody has their own techniques when it comes to engine building but fundamentally this goes back to the beginning of the internal combustion engine people polishing crankshafts so what i'm doing is i'm getting a small piece of tape to uh you know some sticky stuff all right i've got my piece of emery cloth cut i'm going to wrap it around the journal here okay i've got it sized right so that's good all right so before i get started and do this though i'm going to show you that when you polish a crankshaft you're not really altering the uh dimensions a ton uh, so we're going to mic this journal just to show you what what we're looking at here
you know, on a common little FYI, just so you know, uh, Big Block Chevy has a 2.75 inch main, which is coincidentally the same as Project Mixed Up Boss. You know, the Ford Small Block Windsor has a three inch main bearing journal diameter. And that to me is pretty phenomenal because that means it's bigger than a Big Block Chevy. Um, but having a bearing that size is, uh, has its downside too because you get into bearing speed and a host of other things. Most aftermarket blocks go down to the smaller two and three quarter inch size. Okay, so we are looking at 2.74985. So let's write that down. 2.74985. down there let's wrap this up now you don't want to get it too tight because if you get it too tight around the uh, journal you won't be able to turn it with the shoelace so you want it just to be able to where you can slide it back and forth like that right there get out your string of choice shoelaces paracord whatever and then what we're going to do is take and wrap this thing let's see here i'm going to get it where the same size okay when it comes to true engine building high performance stuff don't rush through processes such as this you know yes it may take forever it may seem like it's never going to end and you're the the project just keeps going on but i promise you haste makes a ton of waste when you're doing this stuff right here so be patient and good things will come to you Okay, so once you get done doing all of the journals, just like I showed you in the time lapse, what I do, and some will disagree with me and that's perfectly fine because we all have our opinions, but I will take the emery cloth like this and I will put it as an angle and I will barely just enough to scuff the surface to give it kind of a miniature cross hatch to it. And you may say, well, why do you do that? Well, my logic behind it is when an engine is running, everybody seems to be concerned with getting oil to the bearings. And that's an important part. But another important part that's not talked about is getting oil through the bearings and getting it out. So I personally feel like if you got little microscopic grooves for the oil to go in the direction to the outside edges of the uh the journal that you're better off now that's just my opinion and like i said when it comes to this stuff you know everyone has an opinion so just keep that in mind and uh let me show you what i'm talking about once it's complete that way you can get a good idea of what effect I'm after.
like I said, this is not removing any metal. This is just polishing. So when you get down here and you can see, I don't know if you can see it really well, but you know, you're just putting little fine microscopic grooves and it doesn't catch. I mean, it's just polished. Um, and you know, I'm using a very fine grit emery cloth. So you can see that we about have a finished product. So when I get finished up doing this, then I'm gonna show you with the mic, just how much metal we removed in this process. Okay, so now we've got all of our journals polished. Now we begin the tedious process of actually cleaning and washing it out. You know, go to Harbor Freight, get a set of brushes like this for like three bucks, can't beat it. And um, take some brake clean, spray it down, spray in the holes here. Take your brush, chase every hole, and then <clears throat> because we cannot afford to have any dirt or grime in this engine. So, one thing I like to do as I'm doing this is clean the brush itself, you know, because you can be just passing dirt back and forth if you're not careful so we'll take and brush wash it off and we'll go through here clean this thing up and get it ready to be installed into the block put it in its final resting place So this crankshaft looks fairly clean, right? Why do we clean it? Let me show you. That is why we take time to clean the crankshaft. Never assume that it is clean when you're putting an engine together just because it looks like that on the outside. You know, you have to clean every nook and cranny. All of these holes right here. Yeah. Just a little point of reference for you there. Okay, so now we're going back and we're going to measure our journal here and see just how much we removed in this whole polishing process. I think the results surprise you. Four. We took off a one ten thousandth of an inch. So that should put it in perspective, you know, when you're polishing it and you can spend quite a bit of time uh, with the emery cloth and you're not going to remove a ton of material. You would have to literally sit here for hours and hours and hours to really change the dimension of the journal itself. So keep that in mind. Well, that wraps it up. Got the crankshaft ready to go into the big block Chevy now. It's all polished up, cleaned up, ready to go. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports. Catch you later.